right, step one on worksheet 7.5 is to do the very first problem. I've given you no instructions at all. Just take the integral from 0 to x of cosine t dt. Pause this, and when you're done, start it up again. All right. So hopefully you've done the problem. If you've done the problem, it should look something like this. Let me get my active inspire going here. Ooh, okay. So cosine t, you're going to integrate, so it's going to be equal to... Uh, derivative of what gives me cosine? That would be the derivative of sine. And we're going to do it from 0 to x. Oh, so this would be a t here. I'd be careful with that. Variable with a t. Okay. That's an x up here. So I'm going to plug in my x. Sine of x minus sine of 0 gives you sine of x. Should be no problem, so hopefully you did that. Okay, part two, I'm now going to ask you to take the derivative of what we just did. Since we already did this part, essentially I'm all going to ask you to take the derivative of sine x. So do that, and then when you're done, hit pause, and then um, when you're done, come back. Okay, so you should be done with that. So if I already did this part, then all I'm asking you to do is take the derivative with respect to x of sine x, which is cosine x. Now, this should shock nobody. Why? Well, because, what did I do? I took the derivative. I took the derivative of the integral. And as we know, second fundamental theorem says that we think you can do a an integral by simply taking the derivative backwards. And so because of that, if I take the derivative of an integral, I should get my original starting point. Okay? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to do the next two problems. I believe they're down here. Hold on. Let me see if I can grab them. Take a look at them for you. Let's see which problems we're going to do. Okay. So do problems 81 and 83, uh, and then uh, come back to me. Come back to me. Uh, by the way, you should see the pattern is pretty quick. Actually, just do 81 right now. Do 81 right now, then pause this, and then we'll get together. So you should be done, hopefully. Uh, if not, hit pause again and get yourself to done with 81. So let's do 81 right now. So 81 says I got x from uh, integral from x to negative 2 of this little jump. So if I were to do this the hard way, I would go, oh, well, I've got an integral. Uh, it says find the derivative right here, right here, right? So I'm going to take the derivative of the integral. So I'm going to go ahead and first start off with, well, okay, if I'm doing that, um, I would take the integral, t to the third over 3 minus t squared from negative 2 to x. I plug in my x, I get x to the third over 3 plus x squared minus parentheses negative 2 to the third, which is negative 8 thirds. Doing that fast, you should be able to do this on your own. Uh, and then plug in a negative 2, I get plus 4. Okay, now I'm going to take the derivative of this. Now you might be thinking, okay, I've got to simplify it first. Fine, let's simplify it. If I simplify it, I get x to the third to the th divided by 3 plus x squared plus uh, 8 thirds, 12 thirds, 4 thirds. So this will become minus 4 thirds. All right. Now if I take the derivative of this, which would be my next step. With respect to x of this little gem, I would get, throw the 3 out in front, I get x squared minus 2x. So notice a couple things. Well, first of all, notice that we should have been able to do this really fast. The derivative of the integral is going to give me the original function. There's some change in letters that has to do with some cute little arguments involved in calculus. You can't take the derivative of something that already has a variable in it, so it's one of those, eh, okay, fine, change the variable, we're fine. That's not really important, so just, just realize you've got to change the letter. Second thing, um, and more significant, is this had a, a, at the very beginning, it had a minus 2 on it. Since it had a minus 2 on it, you would think, well, that might make a difference, right? The first one was zero, that's fine. But notice, whatever number I put down here, 
553,6000, right? I put 5 billion in here. Doesn't matter because it's going to make a number here. When I take the derivative of a number, it goes away. Doesn't matter what the number is. So whatever number you plug in, it goes away. Does that make sense? Okay. All right, so with that in mind, with that in mind, you should be able to do several problems. Okay? So here's what I'd like you to do. I'd like you to uh, do number 83. And you should do it in 5.2 seconds. If you do it any longer than that, you're wasting your time. So pause this, take your 5.2 seconds to do it, and then come back. All right, so the answer is square root of x to the 4, that's a 4, uh, plus 1. Done. How do I do that? Well, it's the derivative. As we take the derivative of an integral, I'm just going to plug an x in everywhere. On. Not that hard. Okay? All right. So, with that in mind, uh, if you're still struggling, you should look and try the problem number, what is it? Problem number 85 on the back. Do not go past that point. Go ahead and try problem number 85. Actually, let's all try problem number 85. Go ahead and try problem number 85, and then we'll talk about some glitches that might come up. Okay, problem number 85. So, pause this. All right. All right, you should be done pausing it. You should have the problem done. What's the answer? Well, the derivative, the, it says take the derivative of an integral. It's the derivative of the integral. The answer is going to be x cosine x. Yeah, you can do it the hard way, but why bother? Oh, you can't do this hard way because two things multiply together. We don't know how to integrate that, so that would be impossible for us to do. All right? All right. So, 85, cake, no problem, piece of cake, can do it. Now, pause, don't go any farther because we have to talk about one glitch that involves this problem. So here we go. Let's go back to the previous page, previous page, and look at this problem right here. Uh, try this problem out. Try this problem out right here. You have 10 seconds. Go ahead and try, uh, pause it, um, and then go back and try this problem out. Okay? And it says without a new rule, so do, do it without a new rule. Okay, so doing without a new rule, we would raise the power by 1, divide by the power I get, from 2 to x, plug in my x, I get x to the 4th over 4, plus, God, four is, plus, plus 2 to the 4th over 4. That gives me x to the 4th over 4 plus 4, okay? Now I take the derivative of that. I still owe myself the derivative, so I'm going to take the derivative of that, ddx of that, and I'm going to get x to the 3rd, and we just, I just told you you can do that without going through all this process because you just replace the x with t to the 3rd. Now everybody do the second one, and then I want to talk about it. Okay, second one I talk about. So, okay, so pause it right now and go ahead and work on this one right here. Okay, so something bad happened when you did it the real way. When you do it the real way, you get uh, t to the fourth over four. That didn't change anything. I got from two to x to the second. Nothing happening weird right there. I put x squared in there. I get x to the eighth over four minus uh, two to the fourth divided by four, which is four. Still have to take the derivative. So I take the derivative and I get at 8x to the 7th over 4, which is really 2x to the 7th. Now here's the problem. If I just replaced t to the 3rd with x squared, I would get x to the 6th, and that is not the same answer. So what's the difference? The difference is 2x, right? It's 2x times this. Where does the 2x come from? The answer to the question is, here's what's happening. I take when I took the integral right here, I took the integral, I had not yet put x squared in. Since I had not yet put x squared in, it is completely unaffected by the integral. Once I put an x squared in, though, then I follow it by taking the derivative, which means the inside of this, when I plug it in, is not 
x, it's x squared. So we're taking derivative with respect to the wrong thing. We take derivative with respect to the wrong thing, you have to tack on a chain. So the way to do this problem, the quick way to this problem is to go, all right, it's x to the second to the third, just like we normally would, times, because this was not an x, I have to tack on a 2x. Okay? And that's what's going to get you 2x to the seventh. All right. So again, if this is not an X, we have to tack on a chain rule. And the chain rule is whatever the derivative of the top is, you just multiply it on to the end. So with that in mind, let me tell you what you're going to do next. Tell you what you're going to do next. You're going to do problem number. You're going to skip 87. Do not do 87. Do 89, please. Try 89 right now. Pause this, and then I'll pick up the discussion on problem number 89. Okay. So do problem number 89. All right, you should be done with problem number 89. So let's tack this in. So the answer to this is going to be simply, whoop, pen. it's going to be simply equals square root of sine x times the derivative of the, of the sine x, which is cosine x. Done. And you think, wait a second. It says at the top, it says derivative of the integral, so therefore I can use this rule again. Anybody try 91? Anybody try 91? All right, pause if you need. All right, here we go. It's going to be sine x squared to the squared, right, times the chain. I can clean this up by writing it this way. That's what it is. All right, you should be able to do the last two problems without any kind of much ado. 84 and 86 are waiting for you. Uh, Go ahead and do those right now so you don't get confused. I'm going to write the answers in just a second. So you're going to pause this, do both those problems, and I'll write down the answers. And then when I'm done writing down those answers, I would like, oh, by the way, this is a 1 down here, so don't panic. That's a 1. Okay, it's a 1. Uh, so if you go ahead and do the answer, do not go back to 87. We're going to talk about 87 last. Okay? Okay, that's the answer to 84 and 86 again. Because they're just x's, I don't have to tack on a chain. By the way, if you did tack on a chain, the only thing would happen is you'd get times a 1, right? And that's a waste of time. So if you, wanted, if you just want to remember this rule as derivative of the integral, I'm going to tack on a chain every single time. That's fine. It's just going to slap a 1 on the end. You're welcome to do that. It's good, clean fun. Okay, now we're going to go back and look at 87. All right, I'd like you to do 87 the hard way, and then I'll do it the hard way, and then uh, we'll talk about how you can get around it using the second fundamental theorem, and why it's probably a good idea to just do it the hard way. Right, step one, why is this different? Because it's got an x and an x plus 2. It's got two variables in it. That makes things much more messy. And so, theoretically, if I did it the hard way, I would go t, oh, you've already done it the hard way, so this is t to the second times 2 plus t from x to x plus 2. So the first difference is suddenly the bottom matters. And that's a little bit problematic. Minus, and then I'm going to put in my x's. There should, there should have been x, by the way. Whatever. I got, okay, and then this is a uh, 2x squared plus x. We're good there. I'm going to fa foil this really fast because you've already done the work, and so you don't need to watch me do it in slow motion. That's 8x uh, plus 8, I believe. Double checking. Yep, that's plus 8. Uh, plus, what did I do here? I should have, this would be a 2x squared. My, oh, no, it's an x plus 2. That's fine. Plus x plus 2 minus 2x squared plus x. x these are in parentheses, so that x cancel out that x. I got 2x squared cancel out that. I end up with a, a plus 2. Where did my plus 2 come from? Uh, word. Okay, so this gives me uh, 8x plus 10. So I'm taking the derivative, so I'm going to take my derivative. I'm going to get a lovely 8. Okay. All right, looks like I'm going to have to finish this on another video. Be back in a little bit.